seriously i just don't know what to do right so basically we've got a bit of a problem here this is going to be a bit of a different video today but we're basically going to be explaining everything to do with custom operating systems windows optimization scripts minecraft pvp clients pretty much everything that i promote on my channel and why it's just so stupid i'm just at a loss with it all so basically this all started when chris titus tech uploaded this video tiny 11 has problems uh, my video was actually second in the search results as you can see here he didn't call me out but he did call out youtube creators that are promoting tiny 11 basically so i do want to stress though tiny 11 is safe it's just probably more recommended that you build it yourself. I'll leave some tools in the description of my Tiny11 video and also in the description of this video where basically you can build Tiny11 yourself using open source tools. Uh, but if you're too lazy, you can always just install the ISO. But yeah, there's no proof that Tiny11 is malware or it's not safe. NT Devs come out and said that it's fine. In fact, he was pretty mad actually at Chris Titus for this video. So I don't really want him to be mad at me as well. But I'll leave all the links in the description if you want to make your own Tiny11 iso but i think with chris titus's video he just kind of used it for the title but then just went on a rant so he basically said you shouldn't trust any custom operating systems out there you should basically make your own operating system you should use all of his debloating tools and stuff like that so that you can use an operating system that you 100 percent trust and a lot of what he said is true he's a very clever guy he's worked in it for about 20 years and i've actually been watching quite a lot of his videos recently lots of his optimization videos his extreme gaming one was really good as well and it's just funny because i was watching all his videos and then he just comes out with this video kind of indirectly calling me out so yeah, nothing against him. He's really good. His videos are really helpful, but he does have a point and custom operating systems, you can't trust all of them. So when I make videos, I've made videos on debloating scripts, optimization scripts and custom operating systems. There's always a small minority in my comments saying, this is a virus. Oh my God, you've infected me with a virus. I hate you. Oh, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> like just stuff like that, basically. I see it a lot. It mainly hits my filtered comments. So you don't actually see it on my videos, mainly because all the comments are in full capital letters. Their grammar's really bad. So YouTube just blocks it and it thinks it's a spam. But I do look through every single comment. And although I can't reply to all of them, I do thank you guys all for your support. All the people that like my videos, videos and give me really good comments and feedback and things to try i appreciate all of you guys but there is always a minority that says that what i'm promoting is a virus i shouldn't trust it it's a scam so it's it's a difficult one really because you can't really trust things on the internet like he's saying in this video custom operating systems are normally distributed as an iso image and they're normally massive files they're a couple of gigabytes so you can't actually scan them for malware i mean windows defender is pretty much useless against pretty much everything nowadays uh, but lots of people rely on windows defender which is quite worrying myself included because i don't want to pay for an antivirus you can use free antiviruses, but you sacrifice a lot of your privacy for them because you've got to think they've got to make money. They're not going to make any money out of someone just using their services for free all the time. So it's understandable, but I would not recommend them. Avast, Norton, Kaspersky, all of them don't trust them. If you don't want to pay for an antivirus, just use Defender, but Defender's got its own problems. Anyway, I digress. Yeah, these custom operating systems, you can't scan them with an antivirus. You can use Virus Total, which is a very good website. It scans it under all different types of antivirus. But the problem is, it's too big. It won't work. It doesn't support files over, I don't know how many gigabytes it is. I think it might, might even be one gigabyte. But yeah, you can't do anything. So you're really trusting these people, you're trusting creators like me and other people out there that these are good, these are legit, and these will work. There is a silver lining to all of this, and that is the rise of AME Wizard and Playbooks. So if you haven't seen my last video where I installed Atlas OS, I basically installed it in a special way, where I basically took a standard install of Windows 10 and used AME Wizard and the Atlas OS playbook to turn it into Atlas OS. Now, AME Wizard and the playbooks are all open source, everyone can see what they're doing and i definitely think that they're the future of installing custom operating systems on your computer uh, if enough people care i'm sure they can look through and check that they're not doing anything too shady it's a little bit harder to install which is a little bit annoying 
but I definitely trust them more than I trust ISO images now. I've had so many issues with this before. Like not only have I had comments saying that, you know, this is a virus and whatever, I've had actually experience of this myself. I did inadvertently promote a virus in my how to boost low end laptops and boost Minecraft FPS video. I promoted a toolbox called Windows Toolbox, if you guys remember that. And then I had to make a video straight after saying, uninstall this right now. Luckily, I've cut it out of the video and all the people that are affected by it were able to uninstall it using a script. But it just goes to show, even though it's an open source GitHub project, it still was infected with malware. And the way they did that was, although it was legit, it was open source, everyone could see the code and whatever. When you downloaded it, it bypassed Windows Defender because the malware was not actually in the script itself. Once you run it, it connects to an external server which downloads the payload and then extracts it onto your computer. And this is the problem with open source stuff. Lots of people say, oh, open source is really good. You know, it's for the people, by the people and stuff. But if it's such a small project, no one's going to care to go through all the code to check it's legit. So larger open source projects are good. And it obviously means, you know, people have had time to go through and look at it and call out potential shady things. But small open source projects are pretty much as dangerous as closed source projects because you never know what's going on. And it's so annoying. Another example is uh, Tesla Live, Elon Musk cryptocurrency scams. Yeah, basically YouTube channels get hacked. They open what they think is, you know, a YouTube sponsor like PDF document or a Word document. It turns out to be an .exe file or a .com file. It opens it, it downloads a payload, which obviously bypasses your antivirus and it steals all your session tokens, all your cookies. So they can literally log into your YouTube channel, change the title of your channel, change the name, change the art, delete all your videos and have a scam crypto live stream running on your channel with tons of botted viewers and a link to their website where they basically say, oh, you send us this amount of cryptocurrency and we'll double it and send it back to you, which... It's just a scam. So I haven't fallen for this scam myself. And the reason for that is I'm smart. No, I'm joking. I don't actually use Windows as my main system. All my emails, all my sponsorship stuff is all through a management company. And any stuff that I get sent directly to me, I'm normally on my Mac anyway. So yeah, and same with Linux, I suppose. Arch, by the way. So how does this all tie into custom operating systems? Well, the simple answer is you can't trust them. If you're downloading an ISO, you can't really scan it for malware. But the problem with a lot of them is there's a lot of false positives. So for example, they might make their own tools in there, like post install stuff. And obviously that's not signed. So that will obviously come up with a virus pop up anyway on your computer that you just have to agree to, you know, because they're not signed, you know, they're not a registered company and they don't pay a license to Microsoft to show that their software's not a virus. In fact, actually, Chris Titus said that in his video, you know, companies can pay money to get their software licensed. And even though it says it's not a virus, it still probably can be a virus. And this is the massive problem that we've got. So yeah, custom operating systems, you've just really got to be careful with them. I don't personally run one on my own system. I was really close to switching to Rev iOS on my main computer, but thankfully Chris Titus's video came out and I decided to go my own way and reinstall Windows 10 LTSC, which is a really good version of Windows. I downloaded it directly from Microsoft, so there was no tampering or anything going on. And I've optimized it myself as well using his scripts. But then again, can I trust Chris Titus Tech? You know, it may be open source, but who knows what's going on? And this is the big problem. You just can't trust anyone online. Can you trust me? I'd like to think you guys could trust me, but it's just... It's difficult because when I'm putting my reputation and everything all behind, say, a project like a debloater toolbox or a custom operating system, if that turns out to be malicious, then, you know, my, my life's on the line here. You know, lots of people trust me. Lots of people do whatever I say. I do have quite a lot of younger viewers as well. Although they might be tech savvy, they might get quite worried as well with what I'm saying in this video. And I don't want to scare any of you guys, but I just want you guys to be mindful of the minefield that's out there really with custom operating systems, debloater tools, optimization scripts, even Minecraft PvP clients as well. I've even done a video on that. Yeah, ages ago I did the dark side of Minecraft PvP clients, which basically explains that, yeah, a lot of them can have malware installed. Lots of them can steal your Discord tokens as well. They can be token loggers, which will basically just hack into your Discord account and use it to promote something. Lots of that was going around like the start of last year as well. Lots of accounts on my Discord got hacked. 
and they're promoting like a free nitro thing and then people click on that and then it hacks them and then it just goes round and round in a massive circle. So that's a big problem. But yeah, I don't really do much Minecraft PvP client stuff anymore. But still, anything that you download on Windows could be malicious and you'll never know. And Windows Defender as well, it can quite easily be disabled through a reg key. It's so useless, honestly. Lots of people put their trust in Windows Defender, but a simple reg key can completely wipe it out, completely disable it, and there's nothing you can really do. So if I was a virus manufacturer, if I was a little hacker man, I could literally make a virus that one, the first thing it does disables Windows Defender, and that's it. Boom, I'm in. I'm quite interested in viruses. If you guys want to see a video where I try and download some viruses on a virtual machine and see what they do, because honestly, I'm really interested in that. I'm quite interested in like fraud and scams and viruses and stuff. Definitely leave a like and let me know in the comments. There could be a market out there for exposing viruses and fraud and stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of you guys are tech savvy anyway, so it'll probably just be a funny video of me installing these stupid viruses. But yeah, it'd be it'd be quite cool, I think. So one thing that you might notice that keeps popping up on my computer is I've actually got a firewall. Now, a firewall is brilliant. It's the best way to combat well, any kind of malware, basically. So I'm using Malwarebytes Windows Firewall Control. It's completely free, and it's basically just an add-on to the Windows Firewall in a way. So basically what you do is you put the profile on medium filtering, which is recommended. And now any time an application tries to connect to the internet, you've got to allow it. This even includes Microsoft services, pretty much everything. So you've either got to allow or deny it. And it's pretty good. So if I installed a dodgy piece of software, and it needed to download a payload from an external server. I'll see, oh, so-and-so wants to download something from whatever. I won't recognize it and I'll deny it. And that's how it works. So it's really good. I definitely recommend checking out a firewall if you're on Windows. This in conjunction with Windows Defender, it's not the best, you know, Windows Defender. If you're downloading something legit, it will say it's a virus and stuff that it's a virus will say it's legit. It's so backwards, but it's good to have just as an extra layer of protection. But firewall is definitely where it's at. You should definitely install a firewall if you want to be more careful out there. And obviously stuff that you allow, it won't keep asking you like say Firefox, for example, it asked me if I want Firefox to connect to the internet. I just press allow and then I don't have to do it anymore after that. So it's only the first time it tries to connect to the internet, you have to manually allow and you can also change the filtering level here as well so it's really good i'd honestly recommend checking this out it's completely free there's no adverts there's no pop-ups i mean yeah it is another background process which isn't great but it's definitely worth it in my opinion i'd like to think that a lot of people that watch my videos are power users anyway so if you're relying on windows defender to keep you safe then you're pretty silly and you're better off just using a firewall or a paid antivirus or just being clever with what you download. But this is what I'm saying in this video. Like, even if you are clever like me, you are tech savvy, there's always a risk out there with these custom operating systems, debloater scripts, and even Minecraft clients. But yeah, it's a big problem facing me and the type of content that I produce on my channel. I have to be completely behind it, otherwise it's not gonna be great. So I will say this, all the operating systems that I promote on my channel, I look into and I make sure that they're legit. So I won't just promote some random operating system that maybe one person's done a video on. I'll always make sure that lots of people have done a video on them. I'll look into it myself. I'll look into like the community behind it and that kind of thing before I start making a video on it. And obviously when I install these operating systems, I don't put it on my main PC. I put it on my low end PC, which is pretty much just like a complete sandbox environment. I only connect it to the internet when I'm installing drivers and that kind of thing. So it's, yeah, it, it's a difficult one really. But a lot of the people that make these custom operating systems I'm actually friends with on Discord, so I can always talk to them about different things, any concerns or worries I might have. Or if any of you guys are having problems, I'll always let them know. And they watch my videos as well, so they'll know. And it's really difficult. It's a really vicious circle. And I'm always worried that you know, one of these things that I promoted turns out to be malware or there's something in there that's a little bit dodgy, a little bit sketchy. And this is the problem, really, because ever since that Windows Toolbox incident, I've been very careful with stuff like that. But it's it's still difficult. And honestly, I'm considering not doing custom operating system videos anymore because I've pretty much done all of them. There'll always be, you know, people out there saying, oh, virus, whatever, when it's, you know, probably just Windows Defender being dumb. But it's, yeah, lots of them are coming up out of nowhere. I don't know who to trust. You guys don't know who to trust. 
you guys trust me, but I don't know who to trust. So it's difficult. So I guess the bottom line is everyone just switch to Linux. Everyone get Arch. Everyone put in my comments Arch, by the way. I use Arch, by the way. And all of this will be sold, right? Although a lot of you guys out there do use Linux. And I applaud you, honestly, because I do not have the time to be setting up Linux and troubleshooting everything if it goes wrong. I just don't have the time, honestly, and the stuff, the types of content that I do and the programs and software that I use on my computer is not available on Linux. I've got lots of proprietary stuff, which isn't great. And I know there's open source alternatives, but they're not as great. And obviously it'll take a lot of getting used to. So with my kind of workflow, I think Windows and Mac just work better, honestly. But yeah, if you've got a lot of free time on your hands and you're very tech savvy, then definitely look into Linux. You can use beginner friendly distros like Linux Mint, Pop OS, Zorin OS, and Nobara, which I did a video on about four months ago. So you can definitely check them out, which are good. But if you come into any kind of problems or whatever with these beginner distros, then that's when you start getting technical. That's when you start searching on various forums for your problem and uh, the fixes are not always easy. So I think for most people, I think Windows is probably the best option, but it doesn't come without its caveats. Bottom line is just be very careful with what you install. Just because I'm behind it, you know, you can always just test out for yourself in a virtual machine or in another computer. Or if you want to take the risk for yourself, make sure please to back up all of your files before you install any custom operating system. I thought it'd be a given by now, but I got a lot of people in my comments saying, if I install this operating system, will it wipe my data? Yes, it will. You have to completely reinstall Windows if you're going to do that. So make sure you get yourself a nice external SSD or a hard drive. In fact, you could even just install a custom operating system system on another drive on your computer as well. I know a lot of people do that. Some people even partition their main drive and have like a little bit that they install custom operating systems on to try as well. The other problem is custom operating systems, they break quite a lot of core Windows features. So for example, I was going to switch to Atlas OS, but Windows Hello doesn't work and you don't really realize something until it's gone basically windows hello like i just sit at my computer boom i'm in but having to manually type in a password it wasn't great so yeah be mindful that you know little things like that may not work with custom operating systems as well so definitely recommend checking out anything before you decide to switch to it and when it comes to de-bloating scripts and that kind of thing, I definitely look into them now with like a magnifying glass and make sure they're not doing anything dodgy. Because after the Windows Toolbox incident, I've been very careful. But operating systems, they're a bit more riskier because, you know, they're higher gigabytes. You're installing them on your computer. And just because they're not doing anything malicious now doesn't mean that there's a back door and they could suddenly start connecting all these computers together in a massive like spider web and start, I don't know, harvesting cryptocurrency or hacking all your accounts and turning them into Tesla live or something i don't know so yeah don't panic just be really mindful if something's too good to be true it probably is you've also got to think if something's free what does someone gain out of it you know if it's not money what are they gaining are they gaining data are they spying on you like uh windows does even though windows is paid i don't know why they still want to spy on us all that kind of stuff just be very mindful out there be very careful but if you're using Windows, just be very careful. And if you try out any operating systems that I feature, and uh, I'll try and do the best I can uh, in what I promote on my channel. So yeah, that's pretty much the video. It's a bit of a weird one, a bit of a negative one today. But it's just something I want to get off my chest because uh, it does scare me quite a lot. Thank you guys all for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.